so this is my interesting case presentation. Uh, I'm Tyler Hartman, uh, first year resident. Um, this case happened uh, back in September. Uh, just a little background. Uh, <coughs> the patient was downtown and she was transferred to us here uh, in the department. Uh, she was bradycardic uh, with a heart rate in the 20s. Uh, she was a 58 year old lady and um, uh, not a whole lot of uh, of HPI, but decreased energy for about a week, more severe as of one day uh, ago. Her symptoms were all generalized in the localization. She denies any syncope. She did have this in the past. Uh, the view of symptoms, symptoms was relatively negative. She did have a history of chronic constipation and some urinary symptoms, including dysuria and some frequency. Um, she did have a history of hypothyroidism. She had not taken her medication uh, that day. Uh, she was also on metadrine for orthostatic hypotension. And uh, her vitals, her temperature was decreased down to 35.9. Heart rate was uh, in the 20s and uh, just slightly hypertensive. But um, she was oriented times three. Uh, her mentation was a little bit altered, clearly uh, not sharp. Um, just something was wrong uh, with her with her mentation. Um, she did have marked bradycardia as well. Abdomen was soft, extremities, no edema was noted. Uh, her skin was all normal. Her neuro exam was, was normal outside of the just decreased mentation. Uh, as far as the psych uh, exam, she did have a flat affect with poor concentration. So clearly something uh, was going on that was outside of the norm. Our differential at that point included uh, you know, a long list, uh, but just a shorter list here, infection versus sepsis, uh, some type of overdose for her. Um, it could have been some encephalopathic pathology as well. And hypothermia just from that decreased temperature and hypoglycemia or uh, this hypothyroidism, which she had a history of in the past. Initial workup included an EKG, chest x-ray. Uh, she did get 0.5 milligrams of atropine for that heart rate. It uh, jumped back up in the upper 50s, low 60s, um, and she was not symptomatic. They gave her a dose of Synthroid and uh, gave her some fluid as a bolus and then started at 100 uh, mils an hour. Uh, other labs included um, just basic labs, lights, mag, coags, and trope. Um, we did do a, a TSH as well. And she had already had a CBC and a parathyroid, which was normal uh, earlier that day in the clinic. She did get the urine analysis as well for those urinary symptoms. Uh, the results, uh, the EKG did show that just sinus bradycardia. The chest x-ray uh, did not have any acute infiltrates. Um, and the labs were all uh, very normal except for that TSH, which is elevated, 34.4. Uh, so quite elevated, uh, and that urine uh, was actually normal. So um, they did start T3 at 20 mics uh, with an IV bolus, and they did give her another dose uh, of atropine with heart rate improvement. She was back into like the 30s and jumped back up to the 50s. At that point, they admitted her to the MICU for a probable myxedema coma at this point. Um, and so, <coughs> Uh, the EP team was consulted. They did not recommend any uh, pacemaker placement at that point. Endocrinology was also consulted, um, and uh, they wanted a, a bunch of additional workup, including cortisol, T3, T4. They did uh, do a system EV scan, uh, which was negative for any parathyroid uh, pathology. And they recommended that she continue her current dose uh, uh, of levothyroxine uh, at 125 mics. And they also started T3 uh, at 10 mics, and uh, they gave her a dose of hypercortisone. Um, and uh, they did do a bunch of screening tests for that. And once it was found out that she did not have adrenal insufficiency, uh, they, they actually stopped the hypercortisone. Um, so uh, she was in the hospital about 24 hours and released with probable mixed edema coma. Uh, the recommendations were to continue her other medication and follow up in eight weeks uh, with additional thyroid function testing. Uh, as far as the epidemiology for mixed edema coma, women are more likely to get it than men, and this is probably due to the increased uh, incidence of hypothyroidism. Uh, older generations tend to get it, and uh, populations with uh, iodine deficient, uh, deficiency, and uh, it's more common in winter months as well. As far as the clinical presentation for these patients, the coma and uh, the non-pitting edema is actually rare. Uh, the classic features of hypothyroidism are more common, including uh, you know, like the, the cool skin, the coarse hair, um, the weight gain, the uh, periorbital edema. And um, these patients are also, you know, they have a decreased mental status. They're hypothermic, hypoventilate at times. 
it's definitely a clinical diagnosis uh, with the altered mental status, hypothermia, and other stressors. Um, these other stressors include traumas, uh, tra any tra type of trauma, infection, uh, cold exposure, uh, MIs can do this, opioid use can also do this. And um, that mental status can, can range anywhere from coma to just a, a, a um, like slow mentation. Um, as far as diagnosis, uh, like we did the TSH, which was very high, uh, is indicative of primary hypothyroidism. A low would be a, like a secondary hypothyroidism from like a pituitary pathology. And the serum T4 is uh, also low in this case. And then uh, doing the cortisol can help um, as well. As far as the treatment, it is an uh, endocrine emergency. The mortality is very high, 30 to 40 percent. And uh, treatment includes thyroid hormone replacement, other supportive measures like fluids and passive rewarming, and managing other uh, coexisting uh, conditions. And uh, so that treatment uh, includes T3 or T4 or both. The literature is all a little bit fuzzy about this. Um, some people recommend both. And so um, you can do, uh, mostly it, it's 20 mics uh, of T3, IV is a loading dose, and then T4 is between two and 400 um, mics. Uh, IV and hydrocortisone, and these patients always get admitted to the ICU um, 